Okay, so it seems like my last video has sparked a bit of uproar. Uh, the video is performing really well, which means that people who might not be that well acquainted with polyphasic sleeping are watching it. Uh, the overwhelming majority of uh, people watching the video thought it was great evidence indicating that reducing light sleep is healthy, which I also do, or I think that it's at least a, like a start on the journey. Um, but there are, were also people who thought that I tampered with the evidence or purposefully left out information about the total sleep time affecting the mortality of people. So I'm here to clear up the misunderstanding and either own up to the fact that I was wrong or show you all that I was right. Let's examine the everything and dwell deeper. Stay tuned. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So let me start off by addressing the elephant in the room. Um, I may have used a bit of clickbait with the title since I put it as is sleeping less good for you, new evidence says yes, uh, which isn't actually the case. What this study said, and which I talked about uh, throughout the video, is that a lower proportion of light sleep is associated with a lower mortality. Now, that's not the main talking point of the article. It's about their finding that less REM sleep was associated with a higher mortality. But I made that clear in the video. And regardless, my view is that it's only clickbait if you don't live up to the expectations of the bait, which I feel like I did. Uh, especially if you watch the video and pay detail to how I laid out my argument and for why this is a beneficial study for polyphasic sleepers. Uh, by the way, I'll link the study in the description and you can read it if you want. Uh, regardless, let's move over to the issues people had with the content of the video. So the main part of the article that people have taken an issue with is the following segment, since it's written in a somewhat ambiguous way. In conclusion, increased sleep time and amount of REM sleep are associated with less all-cause mortality in the studied cohort of middle-aged and older adults. Our findings provide further evidence that the duration and proportion of REM sleep may serve as predictive factors for all-cause mortality. Investigation into the relationship between REM sleep and specific fatal diseases is therefore warranted. Further, as sleep architecture is regulated by circadian rhythm, we hypothesize uh, that the extent of uh, REM sleep may reflect the SCN functioning. So if you pay attention to the first part, increased sleep time and amount of REM sleep are associated with less all-cause mortality. Some people interpret that as your total sleep time as well as the duration of REM sleep you have are associated with a lower all-cause mortality. While I interpret that as the duration and proportion of REM sleep uh, that you have are associated with a decreased mortality. And that's pretty evident if you read past this very initial sentence, where the authors explain that the duration and proportion of REM sleep may serve as predictive factors for all-cause mortality. To add to this, if you go back to the abstract of the paper, it reads, Conclusion, the proportion and duration of REM sleep are negatively associated with all-cause mortality. This finding emphasizes the importance of personalized sleep management in community-based populations. Additionally, the total sleep time is primarily only discussed in the beginning of the study in Table 2, where, if you actually look at the data, you can see that the hazard ratio of the total sleep times lands, be lands between uh, 0 0.995 and 0 0.998, depending on which model is used. As a comparison, the percentage of REM sleep lands at between 0.0957 and 0.0972, and the percentage of non-REM1 ranges from 1.045 to 1.019. So the association between total sleep time and mortality is extremely small. So small in fact that it's not statistically significant. Except if you use the most lenient model, and since the other models are against it, 
I'd say it's safe to say that the, it's not a statistically significant association in this study. Based on this, I think it's pretty, pretty safe to say that I'm right here. People just interpreted the sentence wrong and therefore thought that I acted in bad faith when I said that this article didn't correlate a shorter total sleep time with a higher mortality. Some people were also confused by the structure of the study, since it talks about REM sleep and mortality uh, and pays very little attention to light sleep and mortality. But as I said in my previous video, I had to dig into the content of the study to find a correlation uh, between less light sleep and a lower mortality. I didn't claim that the focal point of the study was that less light sleep is uh, healthier for you. And the reason for this is probably that the authors didn't uh, think that this relation was worth investigating. When you get a large, large amount of data, you have to pick and choose what you look at from it. And at this time the authors were more intrigued with the relation between less REM and a higher mortality than between the relation of less light sleep and a lower mortality. I also discussed that this study was a good first piece of evidence, but that people should look out for similar works in the future, because this wasn't conclusive at all. Uh, there were also some uncertainty about the way these metrics were detailed, and that comes from a misunderstanding of what hazard ratios are. So I thought that I'd explain it a bit to you. Um, I'll be as simple as possible, uh, since I don't think that this statistical analysis is very important and I'll cut out the extra fluff. Um, basically, in this study, a hazard ratio of 1 means that the metric doesn't affect mortality. Uh, a hazard ratio of less than 1 means that less of the metric caused more people to die and a hazard ratio of more than 1 means that less of the metric caused less people to die. Good, so now we've settled this. The takeaway from this study in question was that 1. The total duration of REM sleep is negatively correlated with mortality. 2. The proportion of REM sleep to the total sleep time is negatively correlated to, with mortality. And footnote, this is good for polyphasic sleepers because we have a higher percentage of REM sleep. Okay. 3. The proportion of light sleep is positively correlated with mortality, i.e. that less light sleep means that you are less likely to die early. And 4. The total sleep time was not associated with a higher or lower mortality in this study. Thank you for listening to me defend myself from accusations. I hope that you enjoyed this clarifying video uh, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like this video, like it. Share it with friends, uh, post it to your grandma, I'm sure she'll enjoy it. And <laughs> take care, remember to have pleasant naps, people!